Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, SpaceX Starship prepping for flight test 10, Elroy Air successful with Chaparral VTOL transition flight, and Whisk and Signature lay the blueprint for AAM. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. SpaceX Starship prepping for Flight Test 10. SpaceX's Starship is getting prepared to launch on Sunday, August 24th, with the launch window opening at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. SpaceX has completed its investigations into the ninth flight test that ended with a loss of Starship, as well as the Ship 36 static fire anomaly. In the upcoming flight, the plan is to continue expanding the operation envelope on the Super Heavy booster, with multiple landing burn tests planned. The booster will attempt several experiments during flight to gather real-world performance data on future flight profiles and off-nominal scenarios. The Super Heavy booster will perform these experiments while on a trajectory to an offshore landing in the Gulf. The Starship upper stage is scheduled for multiple objectives on its suborbital flight, including the deployment of eight simulated Starlink satellites similar in size to the next-gen satellites. The satellites will also be on a suborbital trajectory and will be destroyed upon re-entry. The upper stage will test a relight of a single Raptor engine while in space. To test the upper stage's vulnerable areas, a significant number of heat-resistant tiles have been removed, and some were replaced with various metallic tiles, including one with active cooling. Other modifications will test the thermal and structural performance of the Starship's catch fittings. After the break, solar-powered flight reaches new heights, literally. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next Gem Minute. Solar-powered flight reaches new heights, literally. A Swiss pilot recently broke a long-standing altitude record, bringing his solar-powered electric aircraft to 9,521 meters, or more than 31,236 feet. The Solar Stratos team has now set its sights on hitting 10,000 meters, nearing the typical cruise altitude for airliners. Rafael Damjan took his Solar Stratos aircraft to 9,521 meters from Sion Airport in Switzerland on August 12th. That beats the previous altitude record of 9,232 meters, set back in 2010. Flytrax approved by FAA for BVLAS operations. Flytrax announced it has received FAA approval for beyond visual line of sight drone delivery operations in the United States. Flytrax is only the fourth drone delivery service to receive U.S. authorization, which will enable the company to expand its service to over 100 million people in the 37 largest metro areas in the country. The BV loss approval comes after a decade of design, engineering, and testing to demonstrate that its drones can operate safely while sharing airspace with other manned and unmanned aircraft. Electra shows off its ultra-short takeoff aircraft. Electra, in partnership with Surf Air Mobility, recently completed the first commercial demonstration of its EL2 technology demonstrator aircraft. The flights revealed just how accurate the name Ultra Short is, with the plane taking off and landing in just 150 feet. The demonstration was designed to highlight the potential for Electra's upcoming EL9 Ultra Short 9-passenger aircraft set for commercial service in 2029. 
by improving the ability to operate from non-airport sites, such as underused airstrips, college campuses, and remote areas. Electra hopes to open up thousands of new route options. First North American STC for Galileo HDX on G200. GoGo announced that its Galileo HDX electronically steered antenna system has received FAA Supplemental Type Certification approval for fuselage mounting on the Gulfstream G200 aircraft, with the STC being awarded to TriMac Aviation. GoGo and TriMac worked together to obtain the STC approval, which is the first for the fuselage mounted HDX in North America for the G200 type. The approval gives owners and operators of the G200 access to the UTELSAT OneWeb constellation of low-Earth orbit satellites. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Elroy Air successful with Chaparral VTOL transition flight. Elroy Air, a San Francisco, California-based developer of autonomous hybrid electric VTOL cargo aircraft, announced it has successfully accomplished transition flight, with its Chaparral aircraft performing vertical takeoff and then transforming to wingborne horizontal flight three times since the end of July. The aircraft performed the transition flights autonomously and reached forward speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. The Chaparral aircraft is flying at forward speeds while using four times less power demand than it uses in vertical takeoff. The team is planning to demonstrate a 25-mile flight by the end of August, as well as a cargo delivery flight between two separate locations by the end of the year. The Chaparral is designed for autonomous delivery of up to 300 pounds of cargo over a distance of 300 miles. It's engineered for speed, efficiency, and safety, while also operating at a fraction of the capital and operational cost of piloted helicopters. The aircraft will enable secure delivery of cargo in contested or high-risk environments without putting any flight crew in harm's way. After these messages, Whisk and Signature laid the blueprint for AAM. Welcome back. Whisk and Signature lead the blueprint for AAM. Boeing subsidiary Whisk Aero is partnering with Signature Aviation, a private aviation terminal provider, to make advanced air mobility a reality. The Memorandum of Understanding outlines plans to proactively develop the necessary infrastructure for autonomous eVTOL operations. Dan Dalton, VP of Global Partnerships at WISC, said, quote, We are very excited to collaborate with Signature Aviation to pioneer the future of autonomous flights. Together, we're building the robust infrastructure and integrated network essential for safe, scaled operations, starting with our focused efforts at Ellington, end quote. Signature Aviation's network of more than 200 private aviation terminals worldwide gives WISC a ready-made map of possible AAM hubs, including key launch markets in Houston, LA, and Miami. Rather than waiting for the technology to arrive before thinking about where it will operate, the companies say they're tackling commercial, regulatory, financial, and technical considerations now. Their first concrete step will take place at Signature's Ellington Airport facilities in Houston, Texas. There, the partners are developing vertiport concepts, sketching out layouts, passenger flows, and operational workflows that could one day accommodate WISC's Gen 6 aircraft. This includes defining infrastructure requirements down to details like boarding processes and ground handling. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.